I might try to do something different on the bottom. Now you can just maybe watch me and then decide if you like it. I'm starting with this. It, it looks like an egg, like a sunny side up, right? If there was no aura in the middle, <laughs> it would be an egg. But what I'll do is just draw some lines that extend from this central orb or oval towards the sides. Just following the natural curve of the orb. And I will do that on the other two as well. And see, you know, where that takes me. It's not a complicated thing to do if you just remember to not overthink and just extend it like that. So this kind of looks like a flower and I think I will make it look even more like a flower. And the way that I'll achieve that is by adding a curve somewhere along these, well, what would be um, petals, I guess. So I think I will curve this side. I'm trying to decide which side needs the curve, but I'm not sure how to decide it because both sides are quite simple. So pick one or quite Maybe I can do the, them both where I see that I need some curving or rounding like this. You can try to pick one and see where it takes you and then decide if you want to do it to the other one too. Okay, I have all of these sides curved and I will do it on the third too. Let me say, I've never tried this, so you know, I'm in my experimenting mode. So this might not be something that you end up liking. I'm just warning you. It might happen that I don't like it either. But then I just keep going and, you know, try to add some more details that would make it more likable to me. So, you know, these look, look almost like flux shapes now, right? See now that I add these, this embellishment that we usually use with flux. This is... This is a challenging shape, right? But okay. Pre I'm pretending not to notice that. <laughs> there are like, you know, cute flowers that might have been attacked by some bugs or something. So they have these bitten petals or I don't know. <laughs> I will just add some lines on this very bottom part. And then I will see about the rest. Let's now do the shading and highlighting. I'll take my graphite first and I will add some graphite right next to my mucus stems and also, of course, on, on the bottom of this C shape. And I will also add it 
on the edges of these pangeas. I'll first deal with the ones with mucus and then with the bottom ones. And one of the reasons I'm doing it is also so that I don't smudge whatever you know I might do on the bottom. This is why I'll do it later. So I start at the top. Um, I also know that I want to add some shade to my mocha pods. And here one of my mochas or some of my mochas are hidden behind the others. So I want to enhance that placement. Now I will just grab my blending stump and do some blending to see what it looks like before continuing with the shading and blending. You know, sometimes you don't know what to do, but after you blend the shades and then observe the drawing, you might get some new ideas. Okay, I also know that I need some shades on some of these mucha stems that are going below the others. And I think now I can switch to highlighting and I will just add highlight below the C shape and also on the top of each of my mucha pods. I think that my pencil is too wide to add highlights to the mucha stems. So if I decide to do it, I will need a thinner white jelly roll instead of the pencil. Okay, so I have these kind of congea vases with mucha bouquet, bouquets on top. And I think that they are so, so cute. I will maybe just add some highlights to some of my mucha stems. And this is a Jelly Roll 10. If you have a thinner one nearby, you might choose a thinner one. I don't have it nearby, so it's in my living room. I might need to do it later, but right now I will stick with what I have. Also on this top parts of mucha stems. Well, aren't they just beautiful? Mocha is always a good choice whenever you don't know what to do. If you add a mocha, you are, you know, making the right choice, I'm sure. Mocha is like a lifesaver when it comes to the creative process. So whenever you don't know what to do or whenever you need something to save the day, mocha is the one. Okay, my um, mucha vases are done and I now need to add shades to this bottom part. And of course I will add shades around these aura lines first. The shapes are quite small so I'm just not paying too much attention to each and every one of these petals. Instead, I'm, you know, approaching the sections, different sections. So I have this orb in the middle. Then I have the aura and I have the petals. So three sections I'm 
just looking at this as having three sections. I don't think that I want to go over these rounded parts, you know, over the black ink, so I'll just add some highlight to the outer part of each of the petal. And then, of course, with my blending stamp, I will blend them. Not too much, of course, need to be careful with this paper. Some white highlight with your jelly roll in this aura, aura around the... And then if you have muted or, you know, just went over your black lines, you can always fix that just by drawing those lines again. I will also add some shades and highlights to these surrounding tangles and sections. So below my Pangea, between the Pangea and the Hollybow ribbon. And adding some shades where one ribbon goes on top of the other one. Of course, here my border goes over my Hollybow ribbon, so I want to add some shade to enhance that too. And then I will just blend that. You can maybe add more to this bottom section. I don't want to add too much because I want my chop to be visible. And if you are not sure, always start with, you know, a lower amount of whatever it is, shade or highlight, and then add some more if you feel that you want. I will add shade also here on the bottom of I see you and below the Hollybow ribbon. Maybe even here so that it looks like it's folded or so that I can, you know, really enhance this central part of the ribbon. Now I will go over my Inktober tangles, Inktober letters, but I can always go back and retrace them with ink if I feel that they need some more black ink. Again, gently or carefully, mindfully blending so that I don't tear the paper. With my white jelly roll, I want to enhance this aura. And the space is really narrow. I'm not making it too easy for myself, you know, if I Tangled bigger and left some more space for shading and highlighting, it would be easier for me. It's not like I intentionally challenge myself, but you know, I think I will just 
add the shade here as well. I might maybe retrace these letters. And if you want, you can also add highlights maybe, maybe to this top part of Pangea petals. Well, these flowers, you know, there are so many flowers and floral motifs right here and they are I think they are quite cute I'm observing this and looking if this A is lost here you now because it's horizontally placed instead of vertically so I don't really see that it's you know, the same shape as this, unless you turn it this direction, but okay. Anyway, we are done with the tangles and I still have this space here to tangle on. So I need to figure something out. And I think I will do it, you know, with the wrap up, maybe leave it for a new video after doing this last one, last tangle. So I will see you, um, well, in a new video, shortly, later, in this very same 31st day of Inktober. Thank you again for being here with me, and if you want to see the wrap-up and some more tangling, just join me in the next video.